Thanks a lot, Bill. You know, a lot of people, including Chris here, had to get Memorial Day break, but Starbucks took a break of its own this afternoon. More than 8,000 stores closed up so the company could give its employees racial bias training. And we had a lot of questions about this one. The biggest, will this two hour training session make any kind of difference to the company, its employees and the customers? So we went to somebody who does this for a living. Starbucks customers got the boot this afternoon. Interesting, because that's exactly what got them into this today. Last month, an employee at a Philadelphia Starbucks called 911 on two black men for trespassing. They were waiting for a third party for a business meeting. We are here to make Starbucks a place where everyone, everyone feels welcome. Flash to today, where 8,000 of the coffee shops shut down so that 175,000 employees could receive racial bias training. They had corporate videos. They had a message from the rapper Common. Helping people see each other fully, completely, respectfully. The meetings also included personal stories of bias, promoting inclusion and a history of discrimination in North America. We've worked um, all over the Twin Cities and uh, a lot of different places across the nation. H. Adam Harris is Associate Director of Programming at Penumbra. On top of acting, he speaks to corporations, police, teachers, etc. about race, diversity and inclusion. Kind of what Starbucks is doing today. Is it possible for employees at Starbucks to actually get uh, a racial parity education in two hours? No, I don't know that it's uh, possible, but it's a beginning and a start. And I think for me that that's the most important thing. And a lot of times people don't want to start because they go, oh, well, it'll be wrong. And what can we really accomplish? What can we really do? And I mean, come on, people, we got a civil rights movement that tells us we got to start somewhere. Former president and CEO for McDonald's on CNBC this morning saying something else. They're going to lose uh, profit today uh, for training that should be done every day of the week, every hour of the day. And they should never get themselves into a position like it. Do you think that this is just perhaps a PR move by Starbucks to mop up those the terrible look of those arrests? I think that it, I think it's good publicity. Uh, I think that I think it's good publicity for them. I can't speak to whether it's just a PR move. I think for me, what becomes important is what happens inside that space. And uh, sometimes, you know, a good PR move actually does create great change. Let's see how um, how it actually turns out and how it grows and how it builds. MLK teaches us that, you know, laws legislate behavior. Uh, they don't legislate the heart. And so what becomes important is that um, the guidelines that we express and the guidelines that these corporations and organizations express are about behavior. Ideally, what we hope to really tackle is the heart. And Starbucks says this won't be the only step uh, taken by the company in response to the incident in Philadelphia. Also, if you're interested in the training material that they showed today, uh, a short film as well that employees watched, it should be up on Starbucks website at midnight. That's what they say. Uh, you know what, I, what do you think about Starbucks and how they look after all of this? Because you could look a lot of ways. The NFL had a lot of controversy, ABC making a move today, but I mean, they reacted right away and they mm -hmm. have all this PR right now. Right. Every news station in the country is doing a story about how Starbucks is training their employees and I think they kind of come off looking good here. Yeah, they do. They come across as trying to set a good example because they definitely set a bad example with the original incident. Right. So this is a chance to say yeah, we're doing the right thing and maybe others will follow this. I mean, when we had our own training, uh, in this company. That was I, the guy who did it. That was the same guy yep, who did it. Yep. And and a, I, I, a lot of it to me is like, oh yeah, I've heard this before, but I'm guessing there were people in the room who hadn't. Right. Who, do, who don't encounter these kinds of conversations in their daily lives. Yep. So it's good. Right.